The Greenwich Show, brought to you in association with the Royal Borough of Greenwich. Get on board with the Tall Ships Festival. I'm Robert Gray, and you're watching the very first The Greenwich Show. Here's what's coming up in the programme. We go late night cruising with an award-winning vintage car club event. They've all stuck with us, and they're making a living out of it. You know, it's really nice, because that's what we wanted to do. We feel the love of a restored Gothic castle. It started as a labour of love, of course, with Lady James, though, who was mourning the death of her husband and uh, uh, built this structure to commemorate his greatest achievement. We're on the water ahead of the Tall Ships Festival. In Greenwich, there will be festivities going on with all kinds of activities and schools and different, all kinds of things will be available, so we'll be helping out them. And with the waterman of the Thames too. I never ever in my life, my working life, got up and said, oh, it's Monday morning, I've got to go to work. Loved, loved going to work, I mean that. Greenwich Market is one of the main reasons people visit the borough. But once a month, in the evening, it takes on a very different light. Winner of Vintage London's best event, Park It in the Market. A few months ago, we sent our cameras along with reporter Phoebe Kibbe. famous Greenwich Market is usually renowned for showcasing its designer goods, but tonight, here, we have something very different. It's usually really busy during the day with people coming in and out, pottering around the market, but today, as you can see, there is a traffic jam and a rather long queue to get in. Once a month throughout the summer, Greenwich Market is descended on by classic vehicles and their enthusiastic owners for the very popular Park It in the Market. The event which takes place on the last Thursday of every month throughout the summer sees an array of cars from VW campervans to Cadillacs, motorbikes and even old fire trucks. Well we decided if we're going to have a car club we needed a focal point and um, Ben, who is the market manager here, I have a shop in the area, we've been friends for a long time, he loves motorbikes, I love cars, and it crosses over, and we were just sitting there thinking, you know what, nothing is happening here on a Thursday night, you know, they've tried everything to get people down here to the shops and that sort of on a Thursday night, and we decided, this is it, we'll try a car show. <laughs> It's never looked back. We actually originally had it so that we'd engage car club and car people, and then suddenly we've got half of the borough coming down on a Thursday night. We've got the Hula Hoop Girls, we've got our local rockabilly band, we've got uh, all of the food traders, we've got the vintage stuff coming in, and they've all stuck with us, and they're making a living out of it. You know, it's really nice, because that's what we wanted to do. These people work very hard during the week, you know, get up at silly hours to come to this market, to set up their stalls, so the, the more we can turn it into a commercial success for them, it's great. Park It in the Market, run by the Mean Old Timers Club, or MOT, welcomes all vehicles, whether they are gleaming or rusty. But it's not just for hairy bikers and petrol heads. This free event is for all ages and families, as it features live music, great food and shops and stalls. So, let's go and take a look at some of these nostalgic vehicles and meet their owners. 
So I'm here with Tony and Charlotte at Parked in the Market with their absolutely amazing Cadillac. 1953 Cadillac. Yeah. 1953 Cadillac. And how long have you had this car for? Uh, about five years. Five years. And why did you purchase this car? Oh, I just like American cars. Well, Mavis is uh, 80 this year. She celebrated her 80th birthday on the 17th of June. He took a glass of champagne in the radiator. <laughs> um, I can tell you champagne's not a very good heat distributor. I bet it is. I bet it but, is. Um, what do you think about parking in the market? Well, it's wonderful. We've been down. This is our sec second car we brought down here now. And, uh, yeah, it's great. We just hope that it'll continue and be taken as part of the local scene. Not often you get a little car show to go with it on your, on your doorstep. Touch, this is a Charles Follett toolbox which has been added to take the tools. Wow. Uh, so you've got your, your, your moving tool kit with you. To be honest, she's not easy to drive. Oh, right. <laughs> um, in fact, if you, if you got to learn to drive her, um, you'd find it difficult to stop her. Right. <laughs> you need quite a lot of power, because it's only cable brakes, um, just like two bicycles welded together. So I'm here with Judy and Jim next to their absolutely beautiful VW camper van. Hello, welcome Hi. to the I bought it for my wife two years ago for a birthday, as a birthday present. But secretly, I suppose, I'd always... No, no, sorry. My wife had always hanged <laughs> after a camper van. I see. Nothing to do with me. This is our first time. I was happened to walk through the market the other day and saw the poster. And I just... Well, I know he loves his car, so I just thought, what an ideal place to, to come for an evening. Like, it's a really nice atmosphere. the classic cars here are very expensive, but I might just be able to afford this one. I'm here with Colin Morley with his absolutely fantastic collection of vintage collection toys. Some that are only maybe a, a year or two old, some are 10 years old, some are 20, some go back 50 years, so it's, it's an expanse of, you know, across the time. Park it in the market, it's obviously there's all the vintage cars and you sell your vintage toy cars. I do. What is it about Park it in the market that brings you back here? It's just, I love seeing the cars, because um, I used to own a few cars in my part, in my time. And it's the atmosphere, it's a lovely atmosphere. And uh, it's, just, it's just great to be here. And let's go with the cheapest item on your table. What would be the cheapest item? Um, Say, so for example, I've got one here for three pounds, yeah. um, which is within everybody's reach. That is a model of yesteryear from about the late 80s. And what about the most expensive item, if the you most, really want to splash out? The most expensive I've got is, is, a, is a collection. I've got £1,750 for that. Wow. But that is a, just after the war dinky set, made for American export. <laughs> We just want to keep it at a nice level so that people can feel like they're still coming in here enjoying themselves. And are there any more future plans to, to change it slightly? To, um, with well, we want to we want to keep you know the 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 owners of the place happy. We want to um, encourage the community to come in. We're going to hopefully get. Um, a situation where we get a drive-in movie in here. Classic car boot sales. We want to do things that keep the thing ticking over. We're very happy with the event. We love doing it. Um, it is awkward and it's kind of difficult to manage, but it's fun and it's by far our most supported event as well that we do throughout the year, so it's, it's been fantastic. What are the plans to continue with Parking in the Market? We'd like to, we'd like to we just have to kind of assess it at each one. And we'll see. I mean, Johnny is very keen to keep it running, obviously, but we have to look at our logistics side as well, so we just have to see. We'll take a view on it after tonight's event. Well, what a fantastic evening it's been here at Park It in the Market. Some great people, amazing atmosphere, and I've had my eye on a few of the vehicles in there, but I think I've definitely come away with the best car. 
the Spice Girls Tour Bus winner. Well, what a great night that was, and congratulations on your Vintage London Award. Now, from the 5th to the 9th of September, Greenwich will be hosting the first London tall ship regatta in over a quarter of a century. There will be some 50 tall ships moored along the riverbank here at Greenwich. We spent the day on tall ship Tolkien to see what it was all about. We are on board um, tall ship sailing from Woolwich to Greenwich and back um, as part of the celebration of the 150 days to go for the Greenwich tall ship regatta in 2014 this summer. So we're having a tall ships regatta um, which is sailing from Falmouth in Cornwall around the Isle of Wight and they're racing from there and then they're going to come up to the Thames in convoy and uh, be in Greenwich for four days from September the 5th to September the 9th. Youth Ambassadors, so we went on a tour ship last year, courtesy of Greenwich, and then we've spent the last few months talking to lots of young people in schools and in youth clubs, and some of them are here today, um, trying to get them involved and uh, telling them about the celebrations, making sure that everyone knows about it. We both sail at the Ahoy Centre in Deptford, and Greenwich actually got in touch with them and asked, do you have two young people who live in Greenwich that we could use for ambassadors for this project? So that's how we got involved. It's a tremendous opportunity both for Greenwich but also for London as well. It'll be the biggest uh, tall ships event in on the River Thames, we think, for at least a quarter of the century and the biggest event in London since the Olympic Games. There'll be lots of things happening on, on the dockside for people. There'll be entertainment, music, dance. There'll be lots of things for people who are coming to visit the ships to enjoy whilst the uh, whilst the, the tiller of ships is here. In Greenwich, there'll be festivities going on with all kinds of activities and schools and different, all kinds of things will be available. So we'll be helping out with them and talking to different people and talking to the young people and hearing about their experiences on the ships and stuff like that. I, th I think what we love doing is we love surprising people, we love showcasing and showing this magnificent area, this area behind me, at its absolute best. So we bring artists from other parts of the UK, uh, from, from Greenwich itself, uh, from um, all over the world in fact, to present these exceptionally unusual outdoor events. I mean, this is one of the most spectacular locations anywhere in the world and putting 50 tall ships on the Thames will look magnificent. It's going to be fantastic. Well, I'm sure the Tall Ships Regatta is going to be the best thing that Greenwich has seen for quite some time. Now, coming up next on the first Greenwich show, I will be showing you round a restored Gothic castle and back on the water with some Thames watermen. Well, I love Greenwich because it's very multicultural. Yeah, that cool? The scullery is about local people, the community, getting people in, giving them great food and service and hopefully they'll leave with a smile. It's very important to us that we use local producers and small businesses. Our coffee is roasted for us locally, our smoked salmon comes from Greenwich, our tea also is from a South London producer. We have our own allotment in West Wickham, we try to grow as much of the produce as we can. When people come into the scullery they know that they're going to get something that's homegrown, and we've put a lot of effort into trying to source everything locally and also we offer a scullery at home service which is uh, any tailor-made parties, garden parties, canopy parties, private dinners in your own home without the hassle of having to do it yourself. The scullery. Local. Seasonal. Sustainable. Vanbrugh Park. Blackheath. You're watching an owl now a jellyfish, and there's his friend. Many others are looking at this too, but they could be looking at your business. Advertise with The Greenwich Show and put your business in front of a captive audience of residents and tourists. Check out thegreenwichshow.co.uk Oh, and there's a butterfly.
I love Greenwich because there's so much going on here, there's always something to do. Now, we know we're not the first to launch local television in Greenwich. Back in the 1970s, Greenwich Cablevision, broadcasting from this building in Plumstead, became the very first local TV in the country. We'd love to make a feature of that station. So, if you were involved or know anybody else who was, get in touch with us. We'd love to hear your stories and memories and see any photographs if you've got any. To get in touch, email info at thegreenwichshow.co.uk or contact us through social media or the website. We look forward to hearing from you. Greenwich is full of history, but here on The Greenwich Show, we're going to show you some of the lesser known historical gems. This month, I went down to a restored Gothic castle. Let's see what happened when I went into the woods. If you go down to the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. There's been a love story going on here for some 230 years. It concerns an historic building built by the heartbroken widow of a naval hero. It is, of course, Seven Drews Castle. Hidden in the trees, high on the hill, this 18th century folly was built in 1784 by the widow of Sir William James, the famous sea captain. Like Sleeping Beauty, Seven Drews has remained dormant for decades. With the help of heritage funding, a local group campaigned to restore her to her former glory. Dr. Barry Gray has been responsible for the restorations. When we took on the project in 2002, um, it was in a quite a derelict state. Vandals had got in and put a certain amount of graffiti here, but even more on the outside and damage fixtures on the outside. So it, it was a pretty unloved building as far as the council were concerned. It's been a labour of love for the board. It started as a labour of love, of course, with Lady James, though, who was mourning the death of her husband and uh, uh, built this structure to commemorate his greatest achievement, the defeat of the uh, pirates at uh, uh, Savannah Derg in, uh, in Western India. He was also an MP and uh, a director of the East India Company, so he had several other achievements as well. What a glorious room. What was it used for? What is it called? Well, we've called it the Lady James Room. We've named it after um, Lady Anne James, who commissioned the building in memory of her husband. Originally, it would have been full of objects related to the life of William James. So there was a, his sword was in a case in here. There was a model of his ship that he sailed. Um, and we think that actually the ceiling was actually decorated, probably decorated with scenes of the battles that William James was involved in. And it is rather exciting. In one of the doorways, there is some paintwork right back from the original time. Yes, yeah, we think that some, most of the wooden panels at one time would have been decorated in that way. It's actually amazing that it, it survived throughout, throughout the entire time it was closed and um, derelict. Well, Laura, we've come up from the uh, Lady James room to the William James room, and downstairs you said that um, it would have contained uh, many of his artefacts. Do we know where the artefacts have gone to? Unfortunately not. This is something we'd really like to find out. You know, we'd like to track down those objects. Um, we had a few leads. Um, the castle after Lady James died was left to her grandson, Lord Rad Radcliffe, but up in Nottingham. Um, so we need to kind of follow a few leads to try and track down the objects, but goodness knows where, where they are. Well, I've just been told I've walked up 86 steps to what must be one of the best views in London. And boy, what a view it is. Well, what a great day that was at Seven Drews Castle. By the way, they're looking for volunteers. Right, next up, the Greenwich Show's Greenwich Guide. Welcome to our look at the upcoming events in the borough of Royal Greenwich. As ever, there's plenty to see and do. The Crossness Pumping Station opened in 1865 as part of Victorian London's essential main sewerage system has an open day and guided walk on Sunday the 28th of September. You will get to see the Beam Engine House and a Romanesque Grade 1 listed industrial building. You can buy tickets at crossness.org.uk. It's part of the Totally Thames event 
a new season of arts, cultural and river events presented by Thames Festival Trust, along the river, which runs until the end of the month. On the 26th of September, the East Greenwich Pleasance will be hosting an outdoor screening of The Goonies. The wonderful movie night experience is £10 and the movie starts at 7.30pm. From the 24th to the 28th of September, the National Maritime Museum hosts the Greenwich Comedy Festival. The event features a number of top name comedians from grouchy deadpan genius Rich Hall and one-liner maestro Milton Jones and many, many more. For more information, go to greenwichcomedyfestival.co.uk. On the 27th of September, in aid of Cancer Research UK, there will be a barn dance for all the family at St Mark and St Margaret's Church in Plumstead. You can bring your own food and drink and tickets are only £6. Children under 12 go free. For more information, go to cancerresearchuk-greenwich.co.uk. On September the 13th, at the Painted Hall at the Old Royal Naval College, you can meet the creator of the amazing interior of the Painted Hall, Sir James Thornhill, the first English artist to receive a knighthood. Performances are free of charge. So join us next month for another roundup of our Greenwich Guide. If you would like to see your event featured here, then please email us, info at thegreenwichshow.co.uk. One big thing we want to do on The Greenwich Show each month is showcase the work of local filmmakers, directors, producers. If that sounds like you, get in touch. This month we're featuring a short film about Thames Waterman. It is directed by Danny Bullman and produced by Abby Hodson. Now she came down from Twickenham one cold December day. As she rolled into Westminster, you could hear the people say, That's a mighty build-up for counties, she's long and tall. Handsome combination, Tim's launches cannonball. Hey, listen to the jingle, hear the rumble, hear the roar. As she comes down from Richmond through the goals We're all about the same shore. age, 60, 70, 75. And we'll all Here's grow old together and characters that we've met and become characters we've become. We've all become individuals now and are known for it. Skipper, and that's the one thing I like about the job, name. the river. A working on the river was his trade, it was his game. And when the season's over and the curtain round is full, they'll carry us back to Twickenham on the launches cannon bowl. Hey, used to wake up four o'clock in the morning the to then go to work and be at work and be there for five, six o'clock, and you look forward to it. I never ever in my life, my working life, got up and said, oh, it's Monday morning, I've got to go to work. Loved, loved going to work. I mean it. I've met some great people, great, great friends who will be mine, I imagine, forever. A way of life, and uh, my father-in-law works at Brathwaite and Dean for 50 years, and he rode bars about day and night. And so we, the family goes back and back, and I've got indentures indoors over 100 years old, so the river is part of our life. I was nearly 15, and that was in 1935. And I've loved every minute of it. You're 12 years old in careers classes. What are you going to do? I'm going to drive a boat, miss. I've been very lucky. I was apprenticed by my father back in 1971. I'd done two years as a, an apprentice lightman, and then after two years I had to go up just across the road from here to the Waterman's Company at uh, Fishmonger's Hill, where I had to ask questions in front of the court, and then I was passed, and then I become a, a, a waterman. But then I still had to do another three years to become a freeman. Training at the moment for Doggett's Cat and Badge. Obviously just finished my apprenticeship for five years. 
and uh, got my freedom last week and now entitles me to row for the Doggett's Cone badge, which is a red coat and a silver shield. It's something that I want, something all my family have got, my dad, my uncle, my two cousins. When you're racing, whether it be 2,000 metres or Doggett's, which is roughly 7,400 metres, you've got to do your own race, you've got to be your own person, not worry about what the other people are doing, just know where you're going to work, know where you're going to push from and just keep focusing and knowing that where you're making them decisions is right. It's the oldest annually held sporting event in the world. It was a playwright yeah, who lived in Greenwich who used to travel up to Jury Lane. One day the two little lightermen or young apprentices said come on jump on and on the, on the flood tide they rode him up the temple which is not far from Jury Lane and he was up there in no end of time. And he was so pleased he decided that he would then progress this one step farther. And that's how the Doggett Coat and Badge became what it is today in the, in the year 2011. It's the same, like we've all done, we all got bound in together, we all swore in together, we're all grown up together, we've all had fun, we've all gone out on the, on the lash and we're all good friends, we're all very close. And it's, at the end of the day, only one person can win. And it's our heritage, I mean, this Doggett's. I mean, how can you beat this? My boy rode it three years ago. Uh, and it's, it's where we come from, it, it's, it's what we're all about, and it, and it should stay that way. It was an upsetting time for everybody because all the companies were losing contracts, all the walls were closing down. We couldn't believe what we was looking at. Yeah. What we thought was never going to happen was happening in front of our eyes, and uh, we was just becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. It's just, it's changed so much, but there is still a living to be earned out there. And it's nice to see the kids cracking on. I think it's bloody wonderful, I really do. Now have you heard about the big strong man who lives in a caravan? It's such a fraternity. We all know Jeff each other Johnson and we've been uh, together for years. We know dads and granddads and we all love each other. And, it's such a, a good trade, I never wanted to see it go. The vein, the vein that goes up my arm, that is like the River Thames. They're a unique, a unique breed of people, I think, who work down here. A unique breed of people, that's the only way I can describe it. Great stories there from the Thames Waterman. Big thank you to Danny and Abby for producing that. Well, that's it for the first Greenwich show. We'll be here on the first Monday of every month, so we'll be here on October the 6th. In the meantime, if you'd like to get in contact, here are the details. Email info at thegreenwichshow.co.uk or contact us through social media or the website. The Greenwich Show, brought to you in association with the Royal Borough of Greenwich. Get on board with the Tall Ships Festival.